Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. Attracting the love of your life to you. A lot of us that are into this law of attraction circle, a lot of us that have come to find me or Anya or any number of other people that you are watching, and there's certainly a number of others that I, I check out from time to time, but Anya is obviously someone I do shows with, so I like to plug her as much as possible. And the show was actually recommended or asked by Pamela, who's someone that I also support and uh, who comments frequently. So some of you may know her name, but she certainly brought this up. And check her out if you've got a chance. Uh, Pamela's got a great channel. Um, <clears throat> but attracting that love of your life to you. A lot of us are very focused on that specific person, right? That specific someone, whatever whatever we're calling it, our soulmates, right? Our, uh, I've heard people call them twin flames, though I've done a show on it in the past. I'll see if I can remember to link it. But there's really, in my mind, a very uh, significant difference between what a twin flame and a soulmate is. Uh, and a lot of people really honestly uh, think it's very differently than it kind of is. Uh, that being said, there is examples of everything all over. <clears throat> and if you search for... Twin Flame on my channel, you'll find that one video. So if you're curious, Dan, what is that video? Twin Flame, search for it, you'll find it. Uh, that being said, a lot of us kind of have this sort of understanding that we are going after a very specific person in a lot of cases. So this kind of can apply to you. I'm not saying this is your scenario, but for those of you, this will be useful information and very helpful. For those of you that are actually really truly wanting love, you're truly trying to manifest love, a loving relationship in your life. Maybe there's someone in particular that you're currently focused on, but really it's the idea of being in a healthy, loving relationship that's really what we're after. This show is definitely for you. It's something I've done, and there was a specific person uh, prior to the person I'm with now and someone I talked about for a number of years, and someone that I adore still to this day, and I always will. But the fact of the matter is, there was a couple, there was at least one major thing about it that if I went through with this relationship, if I fully manifested it to fruition, I would have been behaving in a way that really wasn't the best of me. Now, I've done a show on it. I'm not going to get into it here. Uh, it's like, I think, called The Strength to Walk On. Search for it again if you want. I'm not rehashing it, and I said in that show, it's the only time I'll ever talk about it, and it is. It's the only time I'll ever talk about it. From that, though, I made a point where I am going to walk away from this decision that I've been making for a long time, and it made a lot more sense years ago, and as time passed, and as her child got older, uh, it became less and less a good idea. So, that being said, I finally got to a place where I realized I had a major blocker in my life. One, I'm attracted to someone that doesn't have the time or space for me, right? She's tied up in her own thing. Uh, two, attracted to a situation where it's actually questionable whether, uh, from my standpoint, my morals, right, my whole thing, uh, I didn't feel comfortable about it. So there was the standpoint where I get to be the dude that breaks up the family. Not cool. Not cool in my mind. Uh, no matter how much I love somebody, if I'm the dude that's breaking up the family, then I look at it and go, yeah, that's not really best for all involved. Uh, from a selfish standpoint, yeah, it's best for me. Uh, maybe it's good for her. Uh, but for all involved, no, it's not really the best for all involved. Now, again, it is what it is. That's what my story was. Sometimes those of us are interested in people that don't have time for us, don't have a place for us, uh, don't live near us, are it's in some way, shape, or form, borderline impossible, borderline morally not okay. We're asking to shake heaven and earth to you know make that relationship fail, and they'll stop talking to that person just so them and I can have our moment. Like A lot of things are having to change in order to get me my little slice of the pie I don't know. Again, your call. I am not here to judge. I don't judge. It's your path. Your path is your own path. I am not here to judge. Now, if you tell me that I'm trying to get to San Francisco from San Diego and you hop on the freeway heading south, I will tell you you are going the wrong way because I know where you're trying to go and I know you're heading in the opposite direction. So in that case, yeah, I'm going to say, you know what, you're, you're not going where you want to go. Or oftentimes when I coach people, I ask them, what is it that you actually want? What is it that you're trying to do? 
And then, based off of their actions, is that right or wrong? Well, your actions are supportive of that, or your actions are contradictory to that. So, again, back to the big question. Is it love that we want? Or is it a specific person? Now, it can be a specific person. I'm not... That's not what this show is about. This show is about those of us that actually want a loving relationship. We might have someone very much in our crosshairs. There might be someone very specific, and it could be that person. I'm not saying it's not. And I will say, I did this at the same time in parallel, the same practice, if you will, in parallel to trying to manifest my specific person. And I absolutely believe, without a doubt, the work I did in this actually created the situation where I'm now with the person that I'm with. And it's awesome. I could not have asked for a better person. She's probably one of the most amazing women I've ever met in my life. She's adorable. She's beautiful. She is sweet. And she adores me. Just adores me. It's, it's wow. It's really awesome. And we have a lot of fun together. A lot of good times. So it was really, for me, it was coming around to that whole identifying that blocker. What was it? What am I going after? Why do I keep going after married people? Why do I keep going after people that aren't interested? Why do I keep going after people that won't talk to me? Why won't they return my text? Why why do I keep finding these situations? All right. So once we've realized "Eh, there's some things that I'm maybe not doing right, and really, I step back for a second. I say, yeah, what I really want is love. So once you get to that place, now, now you've done a lot. Now, you again... I started this practice, I did this while I was still interested in my SP. And again, love that person still, dearly, forever, always will. And, and for my person now, I mean, I love you, sweetie, but I, sorry, I mean, you know, it is, it's not that one's better than the other, it's just different, it's totally different. So I'll get in trouble for these comments, but I'm trying to help for those of everyone else out there. This is where you kind of come to that conclusion. You're like, ah, why is this? Why am I, why do I keep doing this? I've got a few people that comment frequently that are coming to mind right now. I'm in the same boat. I did the same thing. So what I finally did is I said, well, I want love. Love is what I want. Love is what I'd like to experience. A relationship that's healthy. (coughs) So from that standpoint, you start working on imagining what your perfect person is or what your specific person should be or is, or is going to be. I called it like making your perfect person. I think I did a video on this way back when, when I did it, when I was doing this technique. And you do storyboards. There's a number of things. You can do storyboards. You can do pictures of <clears throat> qualities that represent the individual that you're interested in. Like, And it's not a person. It's not a specific person. It's qualities. So maybe you want them to be tender. Maybe you want them to be endearing. Maybe you want them to be Loving. Maybe you want them to be strong. If you're a man and you're looking for a strong woman because you just, you don't have room for that uh, around that. Or maybe it's someone that's very secure in themselves. Maybe it's someone that's really fit and into doing exercise all the time. Maybe it's someone that's very outdoorsy. Maybe it's someone that, you know, wears their heart on their sleeve. Maybe it's someone that shows no emotions, like bike, biker tough, right? Like you could, you could put a friggin' nail right into his arm, just do, 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 right into his arm. And he's like, yeah, it doesn't hurt. Uh, nothing hurts me. I'm impossible to hurt, right? And then, of course, that same person, you can't be upset when they don't cry when emotional things happen. Because you're like, well, dude, you just nailed me with a nail and I didn't cry. So why would I cry if when our puppy got run over, right? Like, who cares, right? It's a puppy. Again, what kind of people do you want? What kind of relationship works for you? Is it someone that's very talkative? Someone that's going to allow you to share your day the first second they walk in and they like that? They're like, well, tell me more, honey. Let me put down my suitcase or let me put down my briefcase. Let me put down my jacket and tell me about your day. How did the photo mat screw up your life? Or the Starbucks or the fill in blank here photo mat. No one even goes to a photo mat. I just totally showed my age. I'm an old man, by the way. Yeah, they used to have these little booths and you'd drop film off. Yeah, film. Those little things. Pictures back in the olden days when they weren't digital. And they'd actually, like a day later, sometimes longer, they'd give you pictures back that you could like look at. And you're like, wow, those are wonderful. Anyway, I digress. So you do your storyboards. You think of your different kind of concepts of what works for you. What are the things that really make you hum? Again, an active sex life, not, does that not matter as much? Are we affectionate? Like all the different things that matter to you. Are they poetic? Are they romantic? What is your perfect mate? What makes them, what, like, what makes them such a good fit for you? Now, 
things to keep in mind, by the way. They're available. They're around. They live in my city. Like, whatever your issue is with your SP, whatever you perceive as why you and your SP are not together, please make sure the opposite, like focus on the opposite of that when you do your your storyboard. Like they live in another city that on your storyboard, it's that they live close to me or maybe they're uh, emotionally unavailable, that they're available emotionally. Maybe they're whatever. Maybe they're dating someone else. They're currently single, wanting to date me. Make sure you have the focus of what you'd like to have in your mate right now. Be there. Even if you have a specific person, whatever qualities that are missing at the moment because you don't have them just yet, make sure that is a part of this mate. Because again, that's going to help you over there with your specific person that will assist. But no matter what, If it's love that you're after, you really want to make sure that's there, right? You want to make sure they're available and good and it's healthy and all these things are happening. So what is that? Storyboards can do it with pictures. You can do it with creative writing. You can write stories. My mate's going to be this. I love him because of blah, 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 right? Or you can speak it into a recorder and just start talking about the things that matter. Or you can... I don't really recommend looking to famous people because first off, whatever people say they're doing in their lives... You're only finding out about that that moment of the focus or the picture, right? Like, ah, that's not necessarily what happened when they went inside and closed the door. And then they're like, ah, blah, ah, right? And start yelling at everybody. So it's not always necessarily, you know, I know everything about Brad Pitt because he's awesome and I've read all this stuff. Well, he always seems to be smiling on camera, no question about it. But I don't know. Maybe he's not always the nicest guy. I'm certainly not. I'm a nice guy most of the time. But, oh, boy, there's times where I get grumpy. Mm. Not cool, but there's times. I think most of us get grumpy from time to time, right? So do some sort of creative writing. Start to imagine, start to envision, start to create this person. What is a good relationship to you? Not what is a specific person. I don't want you to try to describe them. I want you to put them aside for a second and look at me and say, well, Dan, these are the things that really matter to me in a relationship. Tenderness, and they can talk to me, and sense of humor, and they're intelligent, and they're this, or they're that, or they're macho, or they're buff, or they're whatever. Whatever your things are. Talk to me about it. You can comment below, of course. That's always fun. But I'm just saying, from the standpoint of you and I dialoguing right now, what is it that you really want in your relationship? Maybe with that specific person, or love in general. What is it that you want? Think about that. Spend time with that idea. What is a healthy relationship? And I will say without a doubt, this is where all your self-love work comes into play. This is where self-love oftentimes will start to create problems in your specific person. Did with me. Self-love kicked in. I'm like, really? Is this who you are? Are you really this person? Are you the guy that wants to break up the family so you can have your relationship with your person? Really? Like, that started to bother me. No. Like, why can't I manifest a relationship with an awesome woman that's perfect for me and amazing in all ways, shapes, and forms, but on top of that, they're available, they're capable of being... Right? Like, they're all the things that we're missing... Are, are dealt with, aren't a problem. And I'm not trying to rub out someone or I'm not trying to erase some aspect about something that happened already. I'm not trying to undo what was done. Things were done. Stuff happens for a reason. I, I frequently talk about rule number one is accepting that there seems to be an intelligence behind all this. Like stuff seems to happen for a reason. Seems to. I'm not saying it does, but I'm saying... Wow, when you really pay attention to it, it's all amazing how often there's a coincidence between things I was thinking and what was happening or things that happened and what they caused me to do or, right, there's this weird ebb and flow. There's this weird synchronicity. There's this weird, like, I'm uh, involved in life around me. So your self-love really comes into play here. When you think about what is it that I want from a relationship How much do I love myself to ask the universe to give me 
what is right for me, what is best for me, what is healthy for me, what is amazing for me. Having the courage to ask for something that I currently thought just a second ago was what I wanted, and then it's like, but then we'd be together if that was. And then I step back and I'm like, yeah, no, I deserve more without a doubt. I should have more. I'm going to have more. And that's it. And it was at that point where I realized, huh, it really is love that I want. So from the love that I want will come inspired action. And that is when the pieces will finally come together. Now, to talk about that a little bit, because again, you've done all your working on it. You've really looked. You've self-reflected. You've decided whether or not, again, this is not for all of you. So for those of you that are really, really focused on someone specific, th then do that. That's, I'm not saying this is you. What I am saying is for those of us that are at a place where we really look at what we're asking for or this person we're focused on, and we realize that we're probably selling ourselves a hair short, we're, we're settling for less than the best because we love them so much, because I want them back so much, because I want the pain to stop, because whatever the issue is for why we're trying to get that specific person because when they smile and it's gleam and the little sparkles come off and it blinds me for a second when i look at their teeth when they smile they're so perfect well, whatever the thing is right so inspired action will find you when you're doing this when you're doing this work and i'm specifically thinking of the person right now that asks the question when you're doing this work don't worry about whether or not you're going to see the answer, the sign, the thing. Don't worry about whether or not you might miss the opportunity. How will I know the inspired action? How will I know that I didn't miss it? How will I know to do it? If your focus is truly to find love, if your focus is to find this understanding of a relationship that you now have, if your focus is to find this person that doesn't complete you, but actually, you as a complete body and them as a complete body can come together and share a life together. If that is the direction that you're focused on, you will always see the inspired action. You have to. If you're looking for the inspired action, you won't see it. You'll never see it. You might act on it. You might not. Usually you don't. Because when you're looking for things, you don't find them. When you're not worried about it and you're present in the moment and you're living your life and you're doing your thing and you're going about your business and all of a sudden you look over to the left and there they are. Or all of a sudden you're like, huh? Or all of a sudden you're like, whoa, all of a sudden something happens. All of a sudden they bump into your cart at the grocery store. All of a sudden you're getting out to get your gas and you're having a hard time. You're like, I can't get this out. And they walk over. They're like, miss, can I help you with something? And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, shucks. Waha. And they're all like super awesome like everything you ever thought and you instantly melt and you're like i i can't get the gas pump in sir and you're like i don't even know why i can't talk to you it will happen you will be there i promise so that's one of the big keys that so many of us have a hard time with with this part of the process so i've done all the other stuff and then i'm like all right inspired action inspired action where is it where is it i know it's around here Where's my inspired action? Why am I not inspired right now? Inspired action will hit you. It won't when you're looking for it. It will when you're not. I promise. Relax. This is meant to get you to where you're trying to go. It's not meant to be a, a game. It's not meant to be impossible. It's not meant to be like one of those, those machines where you roll the little ball and if you get a 50, you get a bunch of those stupid tickets, right? It's hard to do that. It's hard to succeed. This, no, this is surprisingly easy to succeed when you actually let go and let it happen versus constantly trying to control everything, which so many of us do. And it's okay. We're learning. We're learning. But these are all those little, little components that come together that really make it more fluid, make it easier. But when you finally just surrender to the love, surrender to what it is that you're truly after. And I would say, honestly, even those of us, a lot of us that are going after specific people, love really is what we're after. Sometimes we're trying to get it back, but ultimately, we're trying to get it. 
trying to get that love again. I get that love. It's a good, good Thompson Twins song. Anyway, I'm not allowed to play that anymore. It's unfortunate. Inspired action will find you. I assure you. When you set your focus on what it really is that you're after, and this is beyond just love, but in general, it's a focus-based universe. I say it thousands of times. When you set your focus on what it is that you're after, the inspired action will find you. And it will guide you. Things will happen. That light will turn red at the odd time. And you're like, what? All my green lights are always green. Why is this not green? Well, because it being red right now, who knows who you might bump into now at the coffee shop. Or who knows who's going to be at the gas pump right next to you because I just delayed you long enough to make sure your two lives are in sync. So many of us see that traffic signal as red as, ah, oh, it's red, it's not good. Yeah, no. Universe works in interesting ways. Sometimes, even though I see green lights everywhere I go too, sometimes red lights happen. There's a reason for it sometimes, too. Like I said, there's timings involved, right? One minute difference, one minute shift in your timing can put you right before someone at the exact moment they're there with you. So when you follow the flow, when you go with what you're doing, you're about to walk out to your car to go to work, and you're like, ah, I forgot my keys. You got to walk back upstairs, get your keys, come back downstairs. Ah, I forgot my something. Ah, all right. Whew, finally get to go. Maybe something to it might be interesting. Sometimes it's just karma that you're, I always forget things. And all of a sudden you keep finding that you're forgetting things. But again, these are things that can happen in our life that might seem outwardly to us like, oh, I suck, man. What is wrong with me? But inwardly, it's your higher self just trying to get you on schedule. That's all. When we can really be present in life, when we can be a part of life, when we can truly embrace how we interact with each other and how our timings exist and how it's an ebb and flow, when we really finally appreciate that, finding love becomes very simple. And just to finish my little part of the story, I finally put aside the person and said, no, it's the relationship. If it's her, cool, come on into play. Obviously things need to happen and it's going to be slightly outside of my control, but I really don't feel comfortable doing that anymore. And then Boom, right in front of me at the coffee shop job, a lovely, lovely lady had been coming in as a customer for a few weeks, and we'd become friends, but, you know, there was some circumstances that prohibited us from getting too close in any way, shape, or form, and as it played out, that opened up, and before I left working at the coffee shop, inspired action finally hit, and it was time to ask, hey, I don't know, it's kind of awkward to ask this, but love to be able to take you out sometime. Is, there, is that something we can do? Oh, yeah. Boom. Done. The rest of it's just been, I don't know, I'm eight months later. And it's going great. And enjoying myself. Absolutely. Doing things I never thought I'd do. Experiencing life in ways I never thought I would experience life. All because I let go of a specific thing and actually said, what's the concept I really want? And I was like, well, being in a loving, healthy relationship that's what I want. I've been in failed relationships. I've experienced that. Been there, done that, got t-shirts. No, I want to experience the real deal. And that became my focus. And that's what I found. Life's awesome because what we focus on is what we get more of. It's a beautiful thing. Attracting the love of your life to you. Stan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having a great time, enjoying yourselves. Of course, if you'd like, subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, you can click my little face at the end or my big face, however you want to look at it. And if you put the little bell icons, little little ringy thingies next to the bell, you touch the bell and it'll change. Like I think it mutes and it's blank and then it's like actually ringy. The ringy ones are actually notifications that'll let you know, hey, wait, Dan just put out a video. And you'll be like, oh, hey, cool, there it is. So if you want to be notified, that's how you do that. If you want to turn it off for me or anybody else, that is how you control that. You keep getting notifications of someone that you don't like watching anymore. Well, turn that. You know, if you don't want to unsubscribe from them, but you don't necessarily want to notice, then you can just hit that little un unbutton there or mute it. And it still shows up in your subscriber feed, but you don't get the notifications. Ah, it's just kind of how it works. Just 
throwing that moment out there. It's the end of the video. If you're listening this far, you just like me, apparently, right? But Or this is useful. But anyways, so please subscribe, thumbs up, likes, comments, all that good stuff. Share it with your neighbors, your friends, and all those people. Bounce it off the moon and right back at us. I'm always happy when you do that, too. And uh, yeah, we'll do more great shows. This is an awesome comment. Check out Pam's show, uh, Pamela, and also uh, always Anya. So you got to check out Anya. She's got to love her. Anya's favorite. Good stuff. Good stuff. Anyway, Dan Radio Style. Thanks, everybody. More videos coming your way.